Have you been looking for a plain English explanation of blockchain? Uh, there's a lot of confusion about it, and that's understandable because blockchains are complex, moving targets. Uh, we could talk about it for a year and still not cover everything. So let's have a look how, at how it's sometimes explained. Bitcoin is the first decentralized digital cryptocurrency that works without a central bank. Well, that sounds interesting. Yeah, and it's so simple to use. Transactions take place through the use of cryptography and are verified by network nodes and recorded in an immutable public distributed ledger called a blockchain. What could be simpler than that? Nothing. It sounds great. Right. So is it like investing in stocks? Kind of, but not at all. What could be simpler than that? Any questions? That's a funny clip because it's a fine explanation if you're a, a computer programmer like me. It doesn't mean much to the average person. And uh, I'll include a link to the whole clip in the show notes. Uh, it's, it's good for a laugh. Uh, I work in IT as an IT management consultant, and I get paid for my perspective. I, I like solving uh, tough problems. And have you noticed that people sometimes mix up uh, technology terms? For example... Uh, you're using the internet and the World Wide Web to watch this uh, YouTube video. And maybe someone emailed you a link to it. And uh, email and the web are applications that run on top of the internet. Email could disappear, and we would still have the internet. Uh, the World Wide Web could disappear, and we would still have the internet. But if the internet disappeared, we would not have email or websites. Uh, blockchain and Bitcoin are sometimes mixed up as well. So Bitcoin is the currency that everyone and his brother is talking about. Uh, if Bitcoin were to become worthless, we would also lose the Bitcoin blockchain. And I predict that will never happen, but even if it did, we'd still have the idea of a blockchain. I already created a show for you about, uh, about Bitcoin. So this one's about blockchain. It took a genius to come up with it, and, but the good news is you don't have to be a genius to, to use it and to understand it. By 2025, you'll be using blockchain technologies and be no more aware of it than the internet technologies that you're using to watch this show, like uh, TCP IP, SSL, HTML. I graduated from Sheridan College with a, a computer science diploma. Uh, and I learned how to program linked lists, hashes, Merkle trees, and how to use asymmetric public key cryptography. So computer programmers care about those things, but that's our job. Uh, until this year, none of those topics have ever come up in, in a polite conversation. But in 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto built on those ideas and others to create the uh, Bitcoin implementation of blockchain. So he was the first to solve what's called the Byzantine Generals problem. Uh, and for people like me, that's exciting. Uh, for the average person, it's meaningless. So this What to Know show is the introduction to blockchain that I wish I had when I got started. Uh, I've studied the literature, read the code, watched the uh, Princeton University lectures, and I've identified the leaders in the field and, and listened to them. So I've done all that work, so you don't have to. Uh, you're welcome. Here's the thing to remember. It's not just another database. It's a, it's a network for money, a protocol for trust that will support billions of people increasing their, uh, their wealth. Uh, a protocol is just a set of rules that you can follow. You don't need anyone's permission. Uh, now, to be fair... Well, to be fair... Oh, don't say to be fair. I hate when people say to be fair. It sounds like a to be fair. To be fair. If you don't know an index file from a SQL database, then we're done. I've just taught you everything you need to know about blockchain. But that would make for a, a short video. There's a lot more to it. And if you're curious like me, just keep watching. So have you noticed that the uh, terminology around computers is, it seems like it was designed to mislead you? I, I created a video about passwords uh, and that I encourage you to watch. And the one thing about uh, you should know about a password is that it should never actually be a word. Um, and in blockchain, there's a process called mining, but nothing is being dug out of the ground. There's um, something called a coin, but they are actually entries in a ledger. 
no physical coin really exists. Um, there are cryptographic keys, like a door key, that give you access, uh, but unlike a door key, a cryptographic key can't be replaced if you lose it. Uh, and that's a really big deal. Think of cryptographic keys like $100 bills. If you lose the bill, it's gone, you've lost it. But don't let all that put you off. There's something very valuable here. Blockchain means that we, the people, have a new way of working together. I, I create reliable computer systems to support my clients, and uh, there's a, this is just another tool I can use. And, and here's one way that it's different. Every document you've ever created has what I call credibility. Uh, so what's that? Uh, well, C is for create. You can add to the document. R is for read. You can read your document. U is for update. You can make changes to sentences that uh, are already there. And D is for delete. You can uh, delete words that you don't want. Uh, blockchain does not have the ability to update or to delete information. All we can do is create and read it. And thanks in part to that restriction, it's now the most secure and resilient database on the planet. It's been 100% available since its creation. And the longer your data exists in the blockchain, the more difficult it becomes to change it or delete it. So once a day has passed, it's typically, essentially, permanently recorded. Um, Another fundamental difference is that it doesn't rely on access control to keep itself secure. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Uh, blockchains flip our traditional security models. Every thief in the world can access it. Uh, the blockchain doesn't care who you are or what information you put in it, as long as you do it in a valid way. So there's a very old saying, uh, garbage in, garbage out, uh, G-I-G-O. I've spent much of my career making sure garbage doesn't get in, uh, which I call GDGI. And that's important because whatever you uh, put in a blockchain stays there, and uh, right or wrong. So here are the two main things to remember. We now have a way of agreeing on the contents of a database without anyone being in charge of it. And two, we now have a way of compensating people for helping make that database more valuable. Uh, without a central authority, and that that's new. Uh, now, I know what you're thinking, not to be impolite, but so what? Uh, that's what I thought the first time I heard this. Uh, uh, banks, credit card companies, and cash work for me. Uh, then I learned that blockchain doesn't need banks. And again, I thought, well, so what? Um, they're reinventing the wheel. The, we, all, we already have banks and, and, and the system works. Except when it doesn't. Banks can collapse, currencies can fail. Uh, the people of Venezuela are suffering through that right now. We have it pretty good here in North America, but there are countries where uh, millions of people do not have a government-issued ID. Uh, they can't open a bank account, they can't get loans or uh, establish property rights. Uh, it's not obvious, but blockchain opens up all kinds of possibilities. It offers um, technological alternatives to the institutions that our society is built on, like banks, insurance, legal, and social structures. Eventually, you won't even need a bank account. You will have the services of a bank in your phone. But right now, there are thousands of development uh, projects going on, experiments, really, uh, to do something useful with this technology. Uh, so we're just getting started. For example, my wife sends money from Canada to her family in the Philippines. And we have to withdraw cash from the bank, then go to a remittance office like uh, Western Union to send it. Uh, we can't just do a simple bank transfer from my account to their account. And then they have to go and pick up the money, and the transaction cost is around 5 to 9%, plus everyone's time involved. So from start to finish, it takes about so, four days. And blockchain makes it possible to transfer currency directly and instantly for a tiny fee. Uh, that's a big deal because $10 is a day's pay in the Philippines. The millions of dollars Filipinas spend every year in fees 
could instead go directly to their families. And uh, that matters. Uh, blockchain is the most secure database I've ever seen. If hackers could find a flaw in it, they could steal billions of dollars. And today, though, blockchains are kind of like Fort Knox, uh, if it was surrounded by thieves. Uh, to move money in and out of a blockchain, most people trust an exchange to do it. And the uh, central exchanges are not yet as reliable or regulated as banks. And when it comes to your money, you want it to be secure. Uh, what's the point of having or using a bank if you're going to get mugged on the way out uh, of the bank? So that's one of the thousands of problems that will take us uh, years to solve. And let's talk about the impact on society. H historically, there have been a few ways of uh, organizing large groups of people. There were monarchies and aristocracies that dominated early human history. And then about 400 years ago, we got our first uh, publicly traded company. And it was only about 200 years ago that democracies really started to take off. Now, more recently, during my career, uh, programmers figured out a way of, of working together to create and maintain uh, huge, complex products over the Internet. That's called open source, and about 30 million programmers have uh, worked with it so far. And so the blockchain builds on those ideas to create a new way of working together. And that will eventually reach billions of people. So it creates a, a market where we can, tr can contribute our resources, achieve consensus, uh, trust each other on the Internet, even though we don't know each other and are unable to easily punish bad behavior. Uh, doing that without a third party is a significant accomplishment. Imagine an Internet with accountability, safer to use, no spam, no uh, privacy invasions, no anonymous threats. It would take a lot of work to achieve it, but it will be worth it. And uh, the people who will benefit most haven't even been born yet. We're, we're just getting started. That's fairly interesting. This is the What to Know Show with your host, Peter Weilan.